one of the best ones I've ever been involved in. Just very excited about it. I know our staff did an awesome job of evaluating players and targeting the guys that we wanted to go after and doing an awesome job of taking care of business in that regard. We covered so many uh, of our needs. Uh, very, very excited about this class. Um, before I start getting into the detail of it, I do want to thank these people or groups. I won't say names because there's so many names. And this uh, may be boring to some, but to me it's uh, absolutely 100% uh, very much needed because without everybody here, there's, you just can't get done what we were able to get done. Start out with our administration. Our coaches and the rest of the coaching staff that are not the full-time coaches, our wives, our recruiting staff, our strength staff, our academic staff, uh, equipment staff, graphics, athletic training staff, custodial staff, our professors on campus, the advisors on campus, our fans, our players who hosted uh, the uh, recruits, our nutrition staff, digital media, our football alumni uh, for their part in it, and then everybody also who donated to the Carroll Sofer Indoor Practice Facility that's going up as we speak. Makes uh, recruiting a whole lot easier, a whole lot better. So I just want to thank everybody, and, and uh, there's probably others that I just couldn't think of. I was racking my brain to thank everybody who did something along the way that made a difference for us. Uh, but very, very uh, excited and thankful for the job that everybody's doing. And just going back to our fans, I mean, the, the electric atmosphere that we're able to, to uh, have at um, our football games this season were just unbelievable and uh, we had a big reason. We're, uh, I know a couple guys, if, if they didn't go to the Notre Dame game or whatever game it was, they may not have even come to Miami because of the, the experience that they had. So very thankful for that. Now, obviously today, we added a few uh, names. Nigel Bethel, defensive back from Northwestern High School. We got uh, Marquez Ezzard, a receiver from Stockbridge in Georgia. Jordan Miller, a defensive lineman from Jacksonville, Florida, uh, Sandalwood High School. And of course, Jade Silvera, Plantation, Florida, Plantation American Heritage. So uh, just really uh, <clears throat> excited about adding these guys. Um, we did have a total of 23 recruits. We had 18 in the state of Florida. About 80% of our class is in the state of Florida. Uh, we also have added uh, two graduate transfers. We haven't added them on our campus yet. We can't say names yet, but there's two graduate transfers that are gonna be added to this list, which will be outstanding. And then we'll have a, a couple spots in case something happens by the end of spring ball that gives us the flexibility to add another graduate transfer to our transfer of some type. There's always a chance that that'll happen. So we do have a little bit of space for that, which I think is very important. Um, you know, as I look at the uh, class <clears throat> in totality, uh, we, we got a kicker, which we absolutely needed. Um, we also had uh, on offense, we had four, if you, uh, well, we have three on scholarship, that uh, three signees anyway, and there may be another graduate transfer that'll add to the offensive line. Got two tight ends we're just totally thrilled about. We got our running backs that we wanted, uh, two tailbacks, a fullback, a quarterback, four receivers, a uh, very complete class in that way. Defensively, we got um, three defensive linemen and another possible defensive lineman as a graduate transfer. We've got uh, five defensive backs, which were very much needed, and uh, guys that are really talented that are going to do great things for us, and a linebacker as well. Not many linebackers, but that was by design. Uh, we didn't feel like that was a huge need right this particular moment. So um, <clears throat> just to talk, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you all ask me questions about anybody in this class. When I'm finished, I do have the position coaches that uh, we did sign a position. Uh, I got Ron Dugans for the fact that we signed a receiver in Ezzard and we signed Nigel. I got Coach Rump in here. I got uh, Coach Kuligowski because we did sign a couple D linemen and I have Coach Diaz in here as well for anybody. Uh, when this 
when I'm finished to go ahead and ask questions too uh, before we break into uh, some media, other media things. So with that, I thought I'd uh, open it up and let you guys ask questions. Mark? Yes. Uh, what type of uh, reaction did you get or maybe you knew all along when, when um, Nesta Silvera signed? Right. Were you a little afraid? When Jade signed, um, it, there was some cheering for sure. I mean, we cheer when everybody uh, comes through, but there was probably the loudest cheer, I would say, at that point. Uh, you know, he's been committed a long time. But, uh, you know, kids certainly get to where they're not certain, 100 percent certain about everything they're going to do. Uh, I did get a phone call from him. He was very, very happy and very excited. His mom called me, Roxanne, which was great, too. And she said, now it's, now it's up to me to hold up to all the promises that we gave her for her son, Jade. But uh, very, very uh, happy when that happened. But we were, we were thrilled. We think he's the best three technique in the, in the state of, of, of Florida. You know, we think, we think Jordan Miller is the best nose guard. I mean, by our film evaluation, and I know, you know, there's not all these stars and all that kind of thing, but as we watch tape, um, I mean, I saw him relatively late in the game, and I was just shocked. I'm, I kept saying, what's wrong? Something's got to be wrong. There's no way this guy could be this good, have this good of grades and all that kind of thing, and just be, you know, not spoken for yet. Uh, we think he's a tremendous nose guard. Uh, Marquez Ezard. Wide receiver, very, very uh, physical guy. He's 6'2", 215 pounds, and he plays like a heavyweight boxer, how he goes about his business. Uh, Nigel Bethel, uh, super fast, agile, defensive back. Obviously, you know, played a lot of receiver in high school, too. To, not that I'm trying to steal anybody there, Coach Rump, but he does have those skills. And that's what makes, you know, good cornerbacks great ones, when they have the, the speed and the ball skills of a wide receiver which he has. So, um, but yeah, that was, a, that was a pretty exciting moment for sure. Coach, given the, the turnaround of the program last season and the amount of wins that you were able to pull in and just the way that this community really uh, took to you guys, is this the type of recruiting class that you expected to see come out of that? We did. We, we knew we had a great class uh, brewing as, as uh, time goes, as time was moving along. Uh, even before the season began, we felt very good about where we were. But I knew if we stumbled mightily and didn't get any, didn't give uh, anybody anything to get excited about, you could. It creates doubt in recruits' minds, even if they know they got a chance to come in and play and believe in you and all that kind of stuff. It can get shaken with a, a season that's shaky. And uh, so, you know, to have the success that we had, to have the uh, moments that we had at a Hard Rock Stadium. I, I think, you know, the back-to-back -back games with the Virginia, the night games, the, the Virginia Tech game, uh, the Notre Dame game, you know, being on top of the game day that came in campus, came on campus. And I mean, it was, it was one of the biggest moments you could have in a season. And we played the way we played. Uh, I think we just showed the fan base. We showed the nation. We showed recruits. We showed ourselves what Miami could and should look like. Uh, when we hook it up in our home stadium. And I think that was very uh, attractive to everybody. I think that got everybody excited. I'm sure season tickets are going to be at an all-time high. And uh, and that's a good thing. Essentially, when you, when you look at the rundown of the recruits that you're pulling here, you believe it keeps that momentum flowing, correct? Yeah, I mean, recruiting, I mean, football is a lot about uh, momentum. You know, games have momentum, uh, seasons have momentum, and recruiting do, does as well, uh, even in a particular class or a, uh, hopefully a succession of classes. I think that uh, we, we've, we've uh, kind of battled our way into the nation's consciousness when it comes to college football. I think everybody knew who Miami was again, and that, that was an exciting thing for our program. This contact, this most recent contact period, because right. of the fact that there had been the early signing period. I know you obviously right. worked on future classes, but right. what was uh, it like working? It's always intense this time of the year, especially uh, right before signing date. Um, we had that hustle and bustle before the first signing date in December, and it was kind of a race too to get into all these homes because there's so many guys. I mean, 
obviously having, I think it was 19 signees on that day and it went flawlessly and everybody did their job and everybody agreed, uh, did what they agreed to do. And I mean, it was, it was really pretty seamless. And then, but then you knew again, there was going to be a few more spots and a few more guys out there. And uh, so a lot of our time was spent with the next class and the next class because you, you can't get into all the homes. Uh, there weren't that many kids to go in their homes anymore. It was, it was kind of done. So a lot of our, we spent a lot of time uh, with the 19 and 20 class and 21 and even 22 is a little bit here and there. But, um, but we definitely had to battle uh, like everybody else for those last few spots. So it, it was a little bit, um, I, think it, I think it was probably tough on those kids probably more than anybody else. For us as coaches, we were probably doing less home in-home visits. I know I did more, less in-home visits than I normally would this time of the year because most of the work was done. Mark, you're adding a grad transfer defensive tackle. Do you feel a need to add one at defensive end considering attrition there? And will Scott Patchen move back to defensive end? Well, that's some good questions. Um, we don't know. We think we have enough within our roster to take care of the inside and the outside of our defensive line. If, if something pops up and he's a great player, I would be all for uh, bringing in a great defensive lineman, you know, interior or you know, on the edge. Uh, Patchen will move to back to defensive end. That's already been discussed with the staff with him. He's excited about it. And, and he was very um, thankful that he was able to help the team last year by making the move to tight end. He's, he's, all, he's all about the team. And uh, now he's got a chance to help the team again and maybe feel a little bit more, more at home. Mark, did you guys anticipate so many kids being off the board with the early signing period? Maybe were you right. anticipating that many kids to sign? Did you think maybe you might have some more guys to play? We, so, yeah, we didn't know what to think. We didn't know if we'd have 10 signed, 15 signed, 20 signed. You know, we had 19 signed. I mean, it was really it was 19 for 19. The guys that came in on that official visit were targeted to be uh, committed players, were targeted to be guys that we anticipated signing on the early signing date, not necessarily coming in as mid-years, but, uh, but signing on the dotted line the first time around. And, and they all did. I mean, it was like I was a little bit, maybe a little bit surprised that there weren't any surprises that day. And, um, you know, so a day like today, when you add four to it, uh, you know, say, so, oh, they only got four today. Well, it's because we got 19 the time before. You got you to look at the class in totality. And, and if we keep recruiting like this, there's going to be a lot of happy Hurricane fans, I can tell you that. Mark, yes. How, how many spots does that leave open now? Right. I know the sign here goes through first. Yes. Go well, we've got a couple to go. Um, we have space uh, for some uh, transfers. Uh, and then we have space in, in our 85, we've got, and not that I should be divulging all our numbers, but we got space, uh, we're under the 85 number, even if we went, even if we maxed out the amount of initials we can have, we still have room in the 85. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we're still a year or two out of just coming off of the probation that was there when we got here. And uh, so we're, we're still trying to build that roster. So we're. We're probably another class away from really solidifying 85 guys that can really rock and roll and play championship type football. Yeah. I'm not. No. No. I, like, I mean, you couldn't bring in a transfer if you were maxed out on your initial. So we have some space. It, it is confusing. I don't even know half the rules sometimes, but but yeah, we've got a little we've got a little space yet. What are your initial impressions of the ten early in all these? Okay, um, I'm, he's asking about our enrollees. The first guy that just kind of gets my attention is Rousseau. You know, Greg came in, I don't know what he weighed, but he was at least 15 pounds more than the day he got here, which was like in January. So in about a month, he gained 15 pounds. Uh, he's this big, tall, long guy that uh, is really beautiful looking kid. You know, we just went through our first mat drill yesterday and uh, they got indoctrinated to the fun of that um, but um, you know to have let's see we got Hightower um, well let me just say this in general the only 
football related information we have is just what's going on in the strength room to this point. And as I talked to Gus Felder, our strength and conditioning coach, uh, he, he is thrilled. And, and most guys, when they come in, they're, they're anxious to show what they can do. So they're, I mean, they're trying to make that great first impression, you know, and, they're, and they are making a great first impression. We've had very few guys miss anything or be late to anything or and when it comes to class or anything like that. We just had just very minimal uh, issues in that regard. But, uh, you know, Gilbert Frierson, tall, long, athletic corner. DJ Ivey, the same thing, tall, long, athletic corner. Uh, we got Gervin Hall, safety in town, and he, he's, he looks great. Um, who else we have here? We got Lingard, just what you would expect from a guy that is one of the best running backs in America and just a great leader and a guy that's not afraid to, to do his best in, uh, in front of his teammates, where sometimes you know a, a rookie thinks he has to wait for his moment to shine, but he's busting his tail. Uh, Wig, D. Wiggins here doing a great job. I mentioned Hightower uh, working hard. DJ Scaife getting ahead of the game. Uh, Campbell getting ahead of the game, two, two offensive linemen that will have a chance to uh, really get ahead of the game when it comes to strength and conditioning and learning what to do and finding out what Coach uh, Searles wants. I, I hope I didn't miss anybody. I, I think I covered all the names. But uh, really, really uh, feel good about those guys being here for sure. Just a couple more guys. Uh, Coach, as we spoke about the numbers, the quality, quantity of the quality uh, for the depth of this team, what does this class do? It's huge for us. Um, you know, offensively, I know we were in, we were in desperate need of some quality tight ends to come in here and carry on the tradition of tight end you, you know, and uh, we got that done. I mean, those we target those as our top two. We got them. We got the. I mean, what it's overlooked sometimes too is our fullback, Realist George. I mean, he's the number one fullback in America. You know, he's it's probably 255 pounds right now, and, and he's a he's a strong. He's very much like Marquez Williams that we had, uh, the uh, a couple, you know, the graduate transfer from Mars Hill that we had last season. Um, you know, Lingard and Cam Davis at tailback position; those were the guys that we wanted, and we got them. You know, getting Pope, getting Hightower, Wiggins, Hagen, Ezard. I mean, great, great players. These linemen, every one of them, are are they have the bodies types of guys that. Uh, you expect to be able to play championship football before it's over. I mentioned Rousseau. I talked about Jade. You know, again, we think Jade's the very best, probably overall interior defensive lineman in the state and probably in America is the way the way we see it. Uh, we mentioned Miller. I mentioned Miller as, as who we thought was the best nose guard in the state. Just mentioned, you know, some of these corners. You know, and I didn't mention Blades and uh, I didn't mention Blades in there because he's not a mid year. You were asking about mid years, but. But Blaze is a, is a tremendous defensive back who can play, who's a cornerback as well. So, you know, we feel good about it. Uh, Pat Joyner, who's an outside linebacker slash a guy that can come off the edge and rush the passer. Just tall, athletic guy with speed. I mean, we, we got some body types. When you bring in the right body types, you could put weight on them, you could put strength on them, you can continue, add, add their explosive nature with their speed and ability to jump. And, you know, the body types we're bringing in are going to make us a really pretty team when we, when we hook it up. Mark, uh, anything you can say about the, maybe the offseason you know, work of the quarterbacks? I know obviously you're not throwing, but anything yeah. you're about Jaron Williams too, you know, yeah. conversations with that. With it's him. just, uh, we, we, Jaron is, uh, we, we, we saw him as a very mature guy with a very good ability to pass the ball. He's more of a pocket passer who can run than the other way around. He's not a runner who can throw kind of guy. Uh, you know, him being here for the uh, spring ball is going to be huge. We, we, we like him a lot. We, I want him to compete. I want them all to compete. Um, you know, I mean, and, and, I'll, and I'll say this again. I mean, Malik, Malik is our starting quarterback. But Malik, like everybody else, has got to prove they should stay that way. And uh, that's the way we're doing it at every, at every position. I told the coaching staff, we got to be of the mindset of year one mentality. Year one mentality means everybody's got a chance to prove that they should be the starter or a 
a guy getting reps in a ball game, and there are no scout teamers in the spring, so everybody gets a chance to show what they got. We'll do one more with Chris. Have you made a decision on the 10th coach, or when do you expect to do that? Uh, tomorrow, probably tomorrow morning, I'll, I'll throw something out there for everybody. Yeah, I've made that decision, though. Great. Thank you, everybody. All right, good.